For a previous video, I wanted to make a wind chime using a glass bottle. In that video, I was able to remove the top and the bottom from the bottle, and also crack some spirals into the bottle. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to separate the sections of the bottle at that time. I would like to thank the viewers of my last video that commented and gave me suggestions on some things to try. In this video, I'll be showing how I finally did get those sections to separate. Using the same technique that I used to create the original four spirals, I decided to make one more spiral. My thought was to create a thinner section of glass that I could break away, giving me room to separate the other pieces. Since that was long and boring, I won't show that process here, but you can check it out in my other video. Here you can see the crack that I made. With gloves on, I tried separating the sections of the glass to see if I can remove that thinner strip. After trying for a while, I decided that it wasn't going to come out that way, even with tapping on the strip. Since my original thought was to break it away, I grabbed a punch tool and tapped on that to break away the strip. Now that there was a gap in the glass for me to work with, I removed the tape from the bottle. I needed the section to be able to move around in order to separate them. I put my gloves back on and started wiggling the sections, trying to separate them. I didn't want the pieces to break any more than they already have, but I apply a bit more pressure. In a sudden, instant movement, it all comes apart. I take a moment to look at this pile of glass before I decide to inspect the damage. I have one piece that's perfect. And this next piece is also perfect. This looks like the piece that was broken earlier, so I set it to the other side. And the final piece? Perfect. It was a success. Many times while I'm working on a project, things don't go as I originally planned and I need to make adjustments. During this whole project, it's been like that, but I just keep going. If I do this project again, I won't mess around with making that thinner strip. It was mostly a headache and wasn't even necessary in the end. Next time, I'll just break away one of the other sections and save myself a lot of trouble. Since these pieces are all technically broken glass and very sharp, I sand down the corners to make them safer. Two of these I have already sanded, so I'll show on this third one how I did that. Using 60 grit sandpaper and water, I just sand the corners. There are a few safety things to remember when doing this. Obviously, I'm wearing gloves to keep from getting cut from the sharp edges, but glass dust is also very dangerous. Even though you won't be able to see it, the dust will be in the air. Wear a dust mask and safety glasses. If you breathe it in, it can damage your lungs. At the very least, it will make your sinuses hurt. If it gets in your eyes, it can damage your eyesight. It will also give you a headache and make your eyes feel like they're burning. Working with glass like this needs to be done with care. Sometimes you won't notice the effects until much later. Now I need to sound the sharp edges from the top and the bottom. The cut part of the top isn't flat, but the cut part of the bottom is. I sand the top down a bit, but not completely flat. Then I step through finer grits to polish the surface. I have another video that goes into detail about these polishing steps. I can't. 
On the bottom, I only send the corners. For each of the sides, I need one hole at the top and two holes at the bottom. I have this set of diamond coated bits for my Dremel. I'm using two of them. I'm making the holes with this cylinder shaped bit, then I'm using this angled bit. These need to be used with water. To make it easier for me, I'm going to be submerging the glass as I drill the holes. I have a piece of wood to support the glass as I drill the holes. I start drilling in at an angle, then slowly tilt vertical. I slowly move the bit around to speed up the process. You don't need to move it as much as I am here. I am exaggerating the movement for the video. In the top, I'll be drilling in three holes equally spaced. In the bottom, I need two holes for each side piece. Originally, I was planning on using the 16 gauge wire to hold everything together. But since it's so thick, it was too firm to work with and one of the holes broke away. For that hole, I drilled through the bottom instead. To support everything, I'm going to just use this original bottle cap, which screws on. I send the edge of that, then I'll drill a hole in the center of it. You can use a hole to support it in a couple of ways. You can use an eyeball, like I'm demonstrating here, or you can use a string. Before connecting everything together, I do a few things to prepare the sides. I use 22 gauge copper wire that is colored with a silvery coating. I'm adding the tape to keep the sides from banging against each other while I'm putting everything together. After connecting the top and bottom, I remove the tape and make adjustments. It's a bit ugly here before I finish the adjustments, but afterwards, I take it outside and hang it up. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. The wires keep the pieces of glass from constantly banging against each other, but they are still loose enough to lightly tap together occasionally. And I love the way the shadow looks. I can only imagine how it would look with each piece painted a different color with transparent paint. Once again, I would like to thank the viewers that commented on my last video and gave suggestions that helped me complete this project. And thank you to everybody that watched through the completion of this project, and also to all of you who have subscribed. Yeah.